Good morning. Okay, what we have here is a uh, 130 volt DC uh, motor, a permanent magnet, that I purchased new a couple years ago and was going to set it up to go on my wood cutting bandsaw so I could actually put a different blade on it and cut steel. Well, as the years have passed, uh, I have no interest in doing that any longer. So we'll start with the motor itself. Like I said, it, it's, a, it's a two horse motor and they list it as being 0 to 5950 RPM. It's permanent magnet, uh, full load draws 17 amps. And I guess you can see that there. All right, next in line is the uh, speed control. Okay, it's 110, 220, 10,000 watt high power SCR speed control. And uh, it has the correct potentiometer in it to give you controllable speed from about 50 RPM to max. Now I have never run this thing up to max because you know <laughs> seems seems like it's pretty fast by almost 6000 RPMs. But anyway, it's all wired up ready to go. And in line you can't see it, but there's a 35 amp fuse holder which right now it has 25 amp fuse in it because of course like I said the maximum draw of the motor is 17 amps. All right, and next to that is the uh, bridge rectifier and it's a thousand volt 50 amp and it's in a metal case and that can be mounted with the center set any place you feel you would like to mount it. And when I ship it, I'll ship it with that hooked up because the bridge rectifier, uh, if you're not familiar, there's only two lugs marked. There's an AC over on this side and the corresponding lug cattywampus across the other side is your AC. So your AC input goes in there. And then on this side is a plus which is your DC output. And of course the far side going across the other side is your negative side. And by reversing those you can make this run backwards. However, if you do make it go backwards, make sure you pin the heavy cast iron flywheel to the shaft because it is possible to spin that flywheel off the threaded shaft. All right, the next thing is a, uh, a heavy-duty motor choke and what this is for, it smooths out the motor torque so you won't get a bunch of little spikes and, uh, and low spots. All right, so I'm going to shut this off for a minute. Okay, I'm sh quite sure that I'll get my arms and everything else in this uh, short video, but I like to put these on eBay so when you're buying something, you know just what you're buying. So anyway, um, I, here's a, a, a piece of reflective tape on there that I actually used a, uh, a digital tachometer and this 500 RPM is what I would consider the slowest usable speed and I certainly don't have anything to test the actual torque but I will say that with a rag up on top of here you can burn your fingers right quick when you try to stop this thing so and that's on a full-size OD and this is an inch and a quarter pulley and along with this will come the uh, little five or seven groove uh, V-belt so here we go the potentiometer knob here and you crank it up just a little bit and that's less than 50 RPMs right there but like I said uh, I wouldn't consider it usable torque and of course as you go clockwise with the pot
very quiet. And I'm pushing it about as hard as I can, and you can hear it bogging down just a hair, but it does crack. Now one thing nice about the way this is hooked up, the normal controls that came uh, with an actual treadmill have what they call a soft start feature. So this feature, I'm just going to unplug the power cord. Stop the motor. And when I plug it back in, it'll go back to that same RPM. So if you have it on a lathe or something like that, you don't have to keep resetting it. If you use the treadmill motor controls that actually came with some treadmill, you have to reset it every time. Okay, that's about all I can tell you about it. Uh, it's very heavy. I'm, I'm guessing about 20 pounds, 22 pounds. So thank you for watching.